Hello friends, welcome to our YouTube channel. I want to share with you today a message that the Lord has been revealing to me about the law of liberty, or what I'm also calling the rule of mercy. I had written a, a little bit of this in one of our more recent articles, and I spoke on it a little bit to our table family, but I have not really explained in depth uh, what I experienced and the message that the Lord is giving to me about this rule of mercy, this law of liberty is very important. And even just this morning, I had, a, it's been a very revelatory morning and the Lord has is, is really helping me unpack this revelation that he's put in me, showing me more and more about this message. So, uh, I've also been in this time with the Lord where he's allowing me to really walk in what I call mercy shoes, to begin to walk in, in that mercy of the Lord in a way I have, have never walked in it before and recognizing that in walking in mercy and beginning to understand mercy and be merciful, I can receive mercy. For, for many things in my life as well. Um, and that's in the scripture. We find that in the scripture. But let me start back at the beginning and explain to you where this kind of started with me. I had a experience and I went somewhere very deep in the Lord. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, just a dimension of him, I, I don't feel I'd ever been before. And I could feel the counsel of the Lord. It was as though I was in a council room but it really wasn't a council room, but I could feel that the, the spirit of counsel was present and I could feel the spirit of might because I could feel his rest and the might and the rest are connected. And that's another message. I could feel knowledge and wisdom and I could feel the fear of the Lord all around. And I, I begin to see the Lord um, prophetic words from past prophetic words and words that had not yet been spoken out were in this space and they were passing by uh, the Lord. And the Lord was looking at each one of these prophetic words and he was making a judgment over these words. They were his words that were released. Some seemed to be rebukes and some were, um, you know, exhortations, all of which I find to be uh, very important. <laughs> rebukes are very important because they get us in line and exhortations are good because they encourage us. Some were prophetic promises, things that have to come to pass and that there's nothing that's gonna stop them from coming to pass. And the Lord, as these words were coming by, the Lord was ruling, judging each one of his own words according to the rule of mercy. I'm gonna read this little bit here that was from our article because I think it best describes what the Lord was doing as he was ruling over each of these prophetic uh, promises. Here's what I wrote. I heard words of destiny spoken throughout the ages and prophetic promises that have yet to be expressed in the natural. Ultimate judgment ruled over every word. He is ultimate judgment and he ruled over every single prophetic word and promise, even though they were his words to begin with. They are his words created in his infinite wisdom, yet still he chose to rule and agree with each of his promises. The promises are commandments from his heart. He always rules in agreement with his design. We find that in the scripture in Genesis 131. God recalls all of his creation and says, behold, it is good. The Lord always rules in agreement with his design and he rules according to the rule of mercy. We find that in several verses in James 2, Romans 11, and Ecclesiastes 12, where Ecclesiastes 12 says, he will bring every deed into judgment and every secret thing, whether good or evil. James 2, um, James 2 is very powerful. I have been meditating in James 2 for many years, and I'm just beginning to see this law of liberty that James talks about uh, with new eyes in the way that the Lord would, because you see, there are many prophetic promises that have to come to pass. They have to come to pass now in this age before the coming of the Lord, before um, the uh, catching away. There are many great words, prophetic promises that must come to pass. 
And those words have been released and we are in the Omega prayer rooms currently coming into agreement with those prophetic promises and getting uh, prophetic pro hearing from the Lord promises that have not yet been released. And now we're hearing them and beginning to release them in the space of prayer. The Lord is looking over each of those words as we're releasing them in prayer and he's saying it's good. I agree with my creation. I agree with my created word. I agree with my creative promise for your life, for those in your household, and for the body of Christ. He agrees with his prophetic promise. And here's what it says about the law of liberty. It says of the law of liberty, James 2, that he rules according to this law, and the merciless are shown no mercy. For judgment will be merciless, to the one who has shown no mercy, but mercy triumphs over judgment. And what does that mean? Well, his judgment is according to his mercy. As we partner with the very mercy of the Lord, the very mercy of God, as we partner with that and we receive his mercy and we stand in mercy with those that we love, he rules every single one of his words according to his mercy, according to um, uh uh, his covenant love, his love covenant. This word mercy can also be described as love covenant. Everything that he does, it's according to his covenant of love with us and for us. It's a really a beautiful thing. It says in Romans 11, he having co-signed all the disobedience that he may have mercy on all. It is his desire. He rules in kindness to those who continue in kindness and in severity for those who have fallen in unbelief. So there he is. I see him in this space, and I know that the law of liberty is, um, I can feel the law of liberty in motion. I can feel the Lord ruling mercy in, in mercy by the rule of mercy over every single prophetic promise. We can take this promise even when it comes to healings, that you might need a physical healing, a financial miracle, a relational miracle. We see that the Lord rules over every single thing through mercy because he is first merciful. And I love that his judgment is according to his mercy. You see, mercy triumphs over judgment. James 2.13 tells us that. But it's for those who have shown mercy. So here we are partnering with the Lord and even reminding him over your sickness or over the, the financial healing that you might need. Saying, Lord, mercy. I call for your mercy. I align myself with your mercy. Allow me to be merciful to those in my life. Allow me to walk in mercy shoes so that I too can receive your mercy. And um, here, even you say over the prophetic promise in my life, it is good. You see, the Lord created each of us and gave a, by his foreknowledge, he knows your very uh, actions that you'll take in your life. He knows your yes. He knows your no. He knows your struggles. And here he is ruling and saying over his prophetic promise for your life, oh, it's good. I rule over that with the law of liberty. It's beautiful. We recognize the priority of mercy in each of the Lord's decisions. By rule of mercy, we are transformed as the word of God judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. I wrote this in our article, An Unfeigned Delight, we align with his law and are moved deeper into him. It's not just to bring forth things on the earth. It's for union with him. As we remain, as we position ourselves in the place of mercy, aligning with his mercy, he draws us deeper into him. I was experiencing when I saw him ruling over these prophetic words, a dimension in him. And I, could, I understood that from every direction, he's eternal. I could feel even prophetic words coming from the depths as though through a very long, almost tunnel or a, a space, a, a, a place in God. I could feel these words coming from a long way deep in the heart of God. And as those words came before him, before his counsel, he looked and said, 
just as he did over creation. It is good. There are prophetic promises in the heart of God that have not yet been released. They're there. And the Spirit searches the depths, bringing forth that message, even to those who are in the prayer space. You begin to receive a message, a prophetic promise. And as you align with the mercy of God, you agree with His creation that's good. Wow, it's beautiful. The love covenant or this mercy of the Lord is a motivator to bring everything into fruition. Everything that's supposed to come to pass will by this motivator. The restoration of all things must come in a very specific way. And this is what I'm so excited to talk about because of what the Lord has revealed to me just this morning about the life of John the Baptist. I'm going to read a couple of verses about what was prophesied about the coming of John the Baptist. And then I want to talk to you about the mercy of the Lord to bring forth John the Baptist. And then the prophetic promise of mercy that is that was to come. It's really quite remarkable. And we can find ourselves, even for those of you who are forerunners, going ahead in the prayer space, maybe in the Omega prayer space, We've been teaching on Omega, and we call it Omega, but it's really coming into agreement with the prophetic promises of God, hearing what's coming, remembering what was already prophesying, prophesied, agreeing with it, releasing it in the prayer space, going somewhere, a forerunning a message, birthing something for those who, are, who have yet to walk in that space. Going into the spaces, forerunning something and leaving your footprints there so that others can follow behind you. Wow, what a picture. Here's what was said in Isaiah 40 about John the Baptist. And I weep over these things. I weep over them. Here it is. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough plains a plain, rough places a plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now that one's not of John the Baptist. Looks like I copied the wrong one, but I have been also weeping over this verse. But it is John the Baptist, Baptist preparing the way of the Lord in the wilderness and making straight in the desert a highway for our God. That verse describing the very thing. And Malachi 3 says this, Behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he's coming, says the Lord of hosts. Behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. He will prepare the way before me. John the Baptist came preparing the way for the Lord. I'm going to read some verses about John the Baptist's life and the coming of John the Baptist. And I want to focus on Luke chapter 1. Okay. Let me read Luke chapter 1, verse 57 for you, and then I'm going to go through this a little bit in his life, and we can see the mercy of the Lord here. Luke 1, 57 says this, Now the time had come for Elizabeth to give birth. Now remember, Elizabeth had been barren, and they were told of the angel that, that, um, that she would have this baby. Right. So here now the time has come for Elizabeth to give birth and she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and her relatives heard that the Lord had displayed his great mercy toward her and they were rejoicing with her. So they heard that the Lord had displayed his great mercy. So she gave birth to John. And they're rejoicing because it says here, displayed his great mercy. But the language there isn't exactly correct. When we break down the language of what's really being said in Luke 157, and this is so exciting for me, 
Because remember I said that in this place of mercy with the Lord, we're brought into our place of transformation. We are transformed and we move deeper into Him. And as we move deeper into Him, our footsteps are left somewhere there and it foreruns something so others can begin to go deeper into Him as we're all connected and we're experiencing the depths of God even together in union. So here we are being transformed by His mercy so that we can experience a depth in Him unlike we've ever known and others can follow and see all these good things about the very depths of God, see even our footsteps there as we are forerunning or even going together in partnership, hand in hand. The language here in Luke 157 is this. It actually means, the word displayed actually means magnified. The Lord magnified His mercy. And it's not toward Elizabeth. It is with Elizabeth. And the word with there is the word meta, also from the word metamorphosis, indicating a great change that had come or a great change that is coming. So here it is. The language is the Lord magnified his mercy with Elizabeth that would bring forth, that had brought forth a change and would reveal his glory. Wow. That's what that means. And her friends and neighbors were re rejoicing over the change that had taken place in Elizabeth, a womb that was barren to now a womb that had given birth. And even when her husband hadn't believed, it was in this moment now, even his voice was restored to him. Let me read it to you from here. Originally, what happened with Zacharias, an angel appeared to him standing right at the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw the angel, fear gripped him. The angel said, don't be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will give him the name John. You will have a joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. And that happened. They were in great joy, rejoicing at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to their God. It's he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And of course, he, he had a, a hard time with that, and he, was, he became where he couldn't talk for some time. But after the birth of his son, he prophesied something. And this is what's so exciting to me. In astonishment, he got the revelation the angel had already given, but now he believed it. And he, he had this revelation, such a strong revelation and knowing that he was even likely willing to die for it. So what he once had a struggle believing, now he was, he was likely willing to die for. And here's what he prophesied. I'm not going to prophesy the entire prophecy but he did say, I'm going to say a few of the lines that he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he's visited us and accomplished redemption for his people. And he says this, to show mercy toward our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise, capital sunrise from on high will visit us to shine upon those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child continued, it says this of John the Baptist, to grow and to become strong in spirit. And he lived in the deserts until the day of his public appearance to Israel. So he prophesied in agreement with this same mercy that came to Elizabeth, the same mercy that was magnified in the very change that took place in Elizabeth's womb, that mercy was prophesied by Zacharias. 
I want to read to you the prophecy that was prophesied by Mary as well. Let's hear it. For the mighty one has done great things for me, Mary, mother of Jesus, and holy is his name and his mercy is upon generation after generation to those who revere him, to those who fear him. And it goes on to say, he has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy. Wow, that is spoken of Yeshua. His mercy, it's woven through both of their prophetic words. It is the very life of Jesus, and it is what John the Baptist made the way for in the wilderness, declaring repent, baptizing. There is something absolutely amazing about this revelation of mercy. Because here I saw in this space the Lord remembering mercy over every word. And I see in the birth of John the Baptist and the miraculous um, birth of Jesus, these prophetic words spoken about the Lord's mercy. So over John the Baptist's life, the mercy of God was present to bring forth the prophetic promise that had to come to pass. And it had to come to pass a certain way. It had to. And there are a lot of details about even the the life of Zacharias. And I won't get into those now because it'll make this video blog far too long. But ultimately, it had to be them. It had to be Elizabeth and Zacharias. The Lord chose. And he knew the end from the beginning. So he knew Zacharias would get the revelation in the end. And he knew that he would give that prophecy over his son's life. Wow. And that's us now. We are in a place now of preparing the way for this return of the Lord. Every word that we are prophesying must be in alignment with the very rule of mercy. And I want to give you this little bit of encouragement. As we quickly align with it, we remember Matthew 5. Blessed are the merciful. They will receive mercy. The Lord will allow us to walk in mercy's shoes. You're going to be confronted now in the, in the coming days with the opportunity to be um, longing for his judgment, pay, you know, payback, or longing for his mercy. And in the space, when I, this is one thing I, I hadn't shared, but when I was in that space with the Lord and I saw the prophetic words I also saw the things that had crossed him, words that he had spoken, things that had been done, wrongs that had crossed him. And I knew because those who had crossed him would not receive mercy because they were not standing in mercy themselves. And so because of that, there would be judgment that would come. That's according to the scripture. Several times in the scripture, we can't deny that. But we can partner with mercy. And in that moment, I was, I wouldn't say I was grieved, but I felt, I, be, I was weepy. I began to weep even in that space. And I weeped for a couple of days. Longing to know and stand in mercy myself. And desiring that those who had crossed God would just turn to the ways of mercy. And so receive his mercy. Let us position ourselves like that now, as though you are in the very counsel of God, seeing every prophetic word, whether a rebuke or or an exhortation or a prophetic destiny that must come to pass, watching it go before your very eyes and longing, longing that all would know the mercy of him. We can go before boldly before the throne of grace because of that mercy. We long for it. And the Lord longs that we would partner with him in this place. So as you pray for those in your life and you pray over situations and you pray for prophetic promises to come to pass, 
align with the law of liberty and see what the Lord will do. I bless you with this in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.